Hey, this is Onesto, and today we're talking about Trackspacer for beginners. I'll show you what Trackspacer does and share some tips so that you can get the most out of this really, really good plugin. If you don't have Trackspacer already, well, you're in luck. You can click the link down below and download a free demo of it. So before I get to the demos, I wanna quickly explain what Trackspacer does. Trackspacer helps create space in a mix by addressing frequency masking. If you're unfamiliar with masking, it's pretty common. It occurs whenever two sounds are trying to occupy the same frequencies. While they might sound great on their own, when they're played at the same time, they can sound more dull than they really are. So what Trackspacer does is dynamically carve out frequencies that the main track needs onto another track in real time. And the best part is that this plugin does it in a way that's stupid easy and really transparent. So now that we know what Trackspacer is trying to do, I want to show you a few use case scenarios and share some tips on how to get the best results. All right, so the first scenario is a really common one, and that's between a kick and a bass. There's a ton of frequency masking happening right here, right now. All right, so let's make some space in this mix. So first, we're going to ask ourselves, which of these layers do we want frequencies to be carved out of? In this case, it's the bass. I want the bass to be getting out of the way of the kick. So on the bass, we're going to put track spacer on there and have it all set up here. And the next thing we're going to do is uh, set up a side chain input uh, going into track spacer. We're going to set up the kick to be going into track spacer here. Setting up a sidechain input is different between every single DAW, but it's usually a pretty easy process to do. And then next, we're going to go ahead and play it. Cool. So this is track spacer. This signal right here represents the kick. Now I'm going to adjust the amount here. And this Y frequency represents what's being taken out of the bass. So you'll see that as I increase it really high, that bass is ducking like crazy. Usually you want to only keep it around, I don't know, like around here, like around 15 to 20%. This amount knob is really powerful for whatever reason. Um, so I'm only really hanging out around here. Um, but you'll notice that as I play this, that ducking is still pretty prevalent. Let's make it a bit more transparent. So we're going to be messing with these filter knobs. So I'm going to put the amount back to zero and look at what, uh, where that kick is at. So we can see all right here, the kick doesn't even like really touch. So I can grab this high cut filter, bring it down here. So what this is doing is that this is gonna be uh, ignored by track spacer. So any frequencies in the bass that are coming up here, they're gonna come through. So let's bring back this amount knob. Great. So that's pretty high, I'm at 3% and it sounds pretty transparent. So I'll even uh, bypass track spacer. Now bring it back in. Great. All right, so the next example is between a vocals and piano. Here's how it sounds. Take me away. Take me away. All right, cool. So let's run through this together. Uh, remember the first thing we should ask ourselves is which of these layers do we want frequencies to be carved out of? And in this case, I want the piano to be uh, getting out of the way of those vocals. So I have the track spacer on piano, I have the vocals being routed into track spacer, and now we're ready to, to begin. So let's start adjusting some knobs here. Remember first, let's try getting more precise by messing with these filters. So it's dropping this down here. Great. And then maybe some of the lows out there too. So we only want track spacer to address these frequencies. Great. So that's sounding pretty transparent to me, but now I want to show you another way to get more precise. So what we're going to do is click this little blue dot and we have the, our advanced panel here. We have a pan knob, left, right, mid side, attack, release, and side chain. What I want to address right now is a pan, left, right, and mid side. So this knob here is saying right now, okay, uh, track spacer, focus on the left channel only right here. We bring it all through the right. That's saying, all right, focus on the right channel only. In this case, our vocal is right down the middle. So instead of using left and right, I'm gonna use mid side. So because our vocal is in the middle of the stereo field, I wanna tell uh, track spacer, focus on the mids. Leave the sides alone for the piano uh, and instead carve out frequencies in the middle of the piano here. So now let's hear it. I'm gonna solo the piano too. So it's harder. So now it sounds even more transparent. I'm listening on these like crazy detailed headphones and it's pretty difficult to hear uh, the, the, the frequency being carved out. So it's pretty impressive. So let's go back to 
The basic panel is on solo, the piano. Here we go again. If I can even push this even more. Yeah, so once again, that's another layer of precision that you can add to Track Spacer. Before I go into the last example, if you're finding this video really helpful, please uh, like this video. Whenever you like this video, it's a really quick and easy way to help support this channel. Thanks. So uh, let's go on to our last example, which is between a vocal and guitar. Here's how it sounds a little obnoxious. Sorry about that. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of uh, frequencies overlapping one another. Um, so remember, once again, I want the guitar to get out of the way of the vocals. So I put track spacer on the guitar. Wonderful. So now let's uh, go through this really quick and I'll show you a couple of fun tips to make it even more transparent if you'd like. So first thing first, we're gonna adjust the filter to only reach here to where the vocals are at, great. Let's bring down a mount knob. Cool. So I'll hit track spacer. And what I'm gonna do is ignore pan left, right, mid side, and instead focus on attack and release. And in this case, I wanna have a more transparent effect. So I'm gonna bring up the attack, make the attack slower and the release faster. Not like all the way, but just most of the way. And let's hear it now. Cool. All right, great. So I have my attack and release in place. I have my filters in place, my amount knob in place. Let's hear how it all sounds. Let's bring in some more amount. Bypass. Unbypass. Now I'm hoping that you guys are listening to each of the examples. You are being like, well, like this is really subtle stuff. Like it's really hard to hear what's actually happening. And that's kind of a good thing. I'm fixing a problem without you actually hearing that I fixed a problem. Of course, if you want to have that sidechain pumping, go ahead, bring the amount knob up or just try it more like traditional sidechain compression. But track spacer is all about fixing frequency masking without you actually knowing it's being fixed. And that's track spacer for beginners. Thank you so much for watching. Please consider liking this video so other music makers can find it. Later.